and we're back for loop two of the Jackrabbits here in Ham. Just got fuel, got some Gatorade in me, got a little breather, and we're off racing again. Kay stayed behind, so it's just me this time for this loop. We got 32 miles of some significantly harder terrain than loop one. Right away, get lost. I notice the guy in front of me slows down. He starts looking around. I'm like, he doesn't know where he's going. So I look left. Right here, boom, I, the little cover for my gas tank popped off. Yamaha's got a little cover on the seat over the gas uh, cap. Luckily, I was able to spot that and not uh, race off of that. Yeah, I would have no idea guess, where that yeah. thing went. But spotted it, got it, so let's put it back on. Good. Get back to racing. He didn't put it back on, right? Sorry. All right, we're back. I'm still searching for a pink little flag. I see in the distance there's some dust way out there. It's like pretty far, so some people are going that way. And I do see a guy to my left. When he starts charging up this hill, I'm like, all right, he's hauling balls. He must have found the, the course. So I'm cutting across to go for he went heading up this hill. Alright, right, I got some markers there. Now there's some guys standing on the peak to the right. And that's where I should have cut right there. Cut right right there but I missed it and I go straight here and I get down here and I can see a couple guys going slow there's a guy ahead of me going slow and there's a guy out in the desert going slow and I'm like alright they've lost the trail already and I'm like where did it go because I just saw a peak marker well uh, someone must have knocked down the, the sign of the arrow that said go right where those guys were and I thought those guys were just spectators watching so I didn't put two and two together but anyways it takes a little while, and I figure, uh, let's go straight. See people way over there. Right, well there's dust out there in the distance, so I just need to start heading that direction. The problem with that, you know, you, you don't want to miss a checkpoint. Some of the checkpoints can be hidden on the back side of a little hill, and you don't, you know, you gotta get your little check on your scorecard so that you get uh, not disqualified. To the right, so I see a little dust trail going off to the right. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna follow that guy because I feel I just feel like this instinct that I need to be going this direction. And it was a good guess because right over this hill, boom, the marker started again. So I don't know what was going on with this middle section here. <laughs> there was no markers. I don't know if I was supposed to go right after that hill or they all just got knocked off or something like that. Maybe. Get over here, and all right, now you can see a lot of riders. I'm like, all right, this has got to be the right way. I don't know how I got off, but I think you had to come in right there and make it hard, right? Yeah, so those are arrows. So somehow I got off. And, um, but we're back on the course now. Back on the whoops. Let's hammer down. Oh, nasty whoops. Desert just never lets up. You got whoops and road crossings, and you're just slamming down the suspension. Boom! Got another road. Boom! <laughs> Such a workout for your legs and your, your back. That's one thing that the hard enduro is a different type of tired. I mean, that was a push deadlift kind of tired, and the, this desert racing, you're just. Like running a marathon, you're just fatigued because you've been hitting whoops after whoops after whoops after whoops after whoops. And the stress of just going 30, 40, 50 miles an hour time through the desert, just hoping you're not going to slam into a trench or a rock or a turtle or who knows.
one thing I love about the Heron Hounds and the desert racing is that you got such variation in your line choice. You can ride right behind someone, eat their dust, or you can kick out to the left. I did that quite often. The first times I was racing, I would just stay on the line. But this time, I, was, I kind of forced myself to not just follow the guy in front of me to, to pick out a new line. You do run the risk of hitting hitting some obstacles, though, so you gotta you gotta stay aware of where you're going, of course. But then you don't have to breathe the dust in the guy in front of you. And you can, see a little further ahead. Yeah, get some speed up. Bah, bah, bah. Catching this guy. See, he's got to pop out to the left and not just eat his dust the whole time. Come on, go. Make that pass. It is a little, it's a little sketchy riding out in the open terrain here, not on the actual course, because you got to watch out for any little obstacle. Oh, I hear someone cuts up across. He just cut left right there. And I see dust still way ahead of me. Why did that person go to the left? That person cut left. And I start looking for pink ribbons here, and I'm like, I'm not seeing any pink ribbon anywhere. I mean, that person's pretty motivated. They're going hardcore left. So I'm like, alright, I'm going to go left. And I see there's people behind us. They are seeing what I'm doing and we all start cutting over here and you can see the dust coming up here. Alright, now we're back on the main line. See, you can get off. You can get off the course so easy. You think it's open terrain. How can you lose the course? Well, it's, it's super easy. You just you're hauling balls, your head's bobbing around from hitting all the whoops, and you're just focused on what's ahead of you, and you forget to see a, see a arrow or a pink ribbon going off the other direction. That dust trail. Keep those pink ribbons in your peripheral. That guy gave me a thumbs up. So he's he's good. Got some dust going through the dust. When you're going fast, that dust it makes it sketchy. So I tried to pop out and get some clean air, fresh air out here. I remember Case took off his helmet at the pits, and his whole front of the, his mouth was just brown and dirt. <laughs> A girl ahead of me, and she's wearing this little white tutu. The whole time I just calling her the tutu girl, which I apologize. We have to find out what her name is. Anyway, uh, I won't call you the tutu girl anymore. But she was really good. She was hauling balls through the whoops. I was impressed. Tell you what, you know, I uh, have a lot of respect for women riders because they are just as good as the men. And every case. Alright, we're making our way through the desert here. We're going to be heading over to our left and up in those mountains there where it starts getting a lot more technical. This is what separates Loop 2 and the Loop 1 are the rocky technical kind of... Yeah, they're single track. Yeah, they're technical. Here's some of it. It's just warming up here. And I know this is nothing, it's just like zigzagging through uh, some rock formations, which are really cool. There's actually out here, there's uh, Trona, the, the hoodoos, I think they're called, the little spires of, of uh, rock formations. I've never seen them, but I'll have to go make another uh, trip out here just to see those hoodoos. See how much slower the checkpoints are. In loop one, you're like bang bang in and out of checkpoints. Here in loop two, you're kind of taking your time, and towards the end, you're just stopping and resting at the checkpoints.
thing in back here. I think I was uh, my left thigh or my right thigh. Both thighs ended up cramping on me at different points in time, so I was just kind of trying to relax them a little bit. But now we still got a long race to go. And the terrain here, you can see it's starting to get a lot more rocky. As we get closer to these uh, mountains here, it gets much, much more rocky. This is what I'm talking about. So we got some nice rocky hill climbs here. This one isn't that bad. It's, it's going to get better, trust me. I was able to stay on the, the right lane. This this is how Virginia City looks. If, if you ever race Virginia City Grand Prix, you got a double track, you got the left lane, and the left rut, and the right rut. That's how the whole course is. Which. It's fun. I did like the race, and I am going to do it. I think I'll do it again next year, but I love the uh, open-style terrain. That's where you can just pick so many different lines and paths to go. Coming down this downhill is very chunky. The guy ahead of me looks a little like he's a little out of control. When you're going down, I'm in control. The guy ahead of me looks like he's just a little bit going too fast for his comfort zone. Boom, he falls uh -oh. and rolls down. And he gets you up right? quick though, runs back to his bike. I go, you alright? He was, alright. All right, moving on. Loop 2 will have a lot of that. You know, the, in the technical sections, it's not about being the fastest, it's Sometimes just about being the guy who doesn't make mistakes. So if you take your time, even like catch your breath a little bit, that way you can hit it, knock it out without making any mistakes, then you, then you catch people or pass people. So here's, a, here's a good chunky rock climb. So this really loose, the, the boulders are moving under the tires, and you really just gotta keep the throttle, not hammer down, but in control. And uh, traction, get, keep that momentum going so we keep that traction. Oh, that was nasty. Nasty. And on the downhills, I like to stay in control. I don't like going too fast to get out of control. It, to me, going downhill is scarier than going up. But uphill, I know I can just kind of charge it go for it whereas downhill I'm like all right bad mistake here would be a bad a bad crash crashing downhill I think is much worse than crashing uphill so on the downhills I always made sure that I was in control and gonna make it through without a mistake this guy is having a little bike trouble but he says he's all right he's all right all right He's out. Let's go. Hammer down. Let's go. Between mountain ranges, you had all this open desert. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if, the, if the climb doesn't get you, it is getting really hot at this point. I think it got up to almost 100 degrees today. So it was getting really hot. And this, the open sections of desert that connects the mountain chains, uh, there's still a ton of whoops. It just wears you out. There's right, a checkpoint. Ease on through. <laughs> uh, I'm very, very tired at this point. we still got a long race to go. doesn't let up it's not gonna have any mercy for you no, the, the dirt here just such a fine silty powder and it was it felt weird it was softer than sand and it just made the bike really squirrely and squishy
up to some more mountains up there in the distance. Yeah, it's got some water. All right, we got a nice, this is a good hill climb. This is, I think, one of the hill. better climbs Woo. of the, the course. We ended up getting uh, past a couple people here. You can see how chunky it is. That's good. This is a good single track. Loop. If I was out on my own, just having uh, a fun weekend, I, this is kind of stuff I'd love to hit. Now the guy in front of me, he's going to dump his bike right there. And then I, I slowed up to see how the course was. I almost ended up dumping my bike too, but saved it. Get around that guy. <laughs> it is so janky. It's quite a good, pretty good hill climb here, and it is a single track, so it's really hard to get around anyone that's in the way. So you see someone stopped, and you'd have to either, you know, just be patient, see if they're gonna go around or if they're, you know, what they're gonna do. You're just taking a breather there, move off the course, cool, thanks, buddy. Come on, Trixie, keep that momentum going. Ugh, I dug a hole. And then I rocked it back. I think I did it twice, two rock backs, and then I was able to get on up to the top. Just taking a little break. Nice big boulder downhill section here. Those are pretty good sized rocks. It'd make you have a bad day if you were to fall on those rocks. And these downhill sections, like I said before, I like to stay a little bit more control. I'll go a little bit slower than I would normally. And just to make sure I'm not gonna lay the bike over and cause myself some, some pain and wasting little, energy mistake, trying to pick myself up. I'd rather you know go more ballsy in the uphills and go for it. Because usually on the uphills, it's because I'm not going fast enough. I don't have enough momentum. So I'm always trying to push my uphills a little bit a little bit more, a little bit faster, more throttle. And then on the downhills, like, you know, just be a little bit more reserved. Because a mistake, you know, slows you way down. So, you know, just going a little slow is not so bad. But a mistake, a crash, you, know, you break it hard on your bike, you hit your hip, or you know, injure yourself in a downhill. See how different this this part of loop two is. So you race loop one. A lot of the guys just race loop one, and they have no idea they, what loop two is even about. Now here's this uh, girl, and I've raced a couple of hare and hounds, and every hare and hound. This is kickstart business. I run into her, and she's stuck on a hard part, and she's having a little bit of bike trouble right now. She'll smoke me on the whoops, but on that little technical sections. She struggles a little bit, but it's good oh. for her for trying. Her E starts out on her bike, so I gotta do a little left to leg you? kick start for her to get her yeah, on her way. And she's yeah, off. You know, I like helping people out. If people ask for help, I'm happy to help. If they don't want help, then I, yeah, I'm gonna keep on going. But I know the struggle's real. I've needed help too sometimes, so it's nice when someone helps you out and gets you going again. She took off too, because you know, I'm going through and I'll go around the corner and she's way far ahead of me already. This little section here reminded me of uh, the Sidewinder Trail did out in Colorado. If you guys want to see an awesome single track that's just side hill action, just chunky rock with a 
ton of cliff exposure. Check out the Sidewinder Trail, it's a good one. the ridge here and she's stuck again and she's no, just no exhausted I think Gives this back side of the, of the mountain have a drink. there's no breath. wind it's really hot I think we're getting close to 100 degrees here and uh, she's struggling starting her bike I don't know what her ah, problem the, the problem with the bike is Whew. but you can't get around at this point and it's kind of a bad area bad yeah. section so I decide I'm gonna help ah. her out <clears throat> and go down and I I'm exhausted though, so I'm, I'm gonna try to kickstart it. And I just have no power. I'm just my leg. I can barely even lift my leg. I'm trying to kickstart her bike with the left leg. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> I gotta steady myself. Do you give it a little twist or no? No. been asked you know just uh, pull in the clutch you can just ride it down she says she can't do it so I hop on her bike and get down this little rock section here get down to this flat spot I was able to bump start the bike kept it running and she came and got it then I had to do the hike back up to my bike oh that almost killed me too Man, you don't want to be walking up this thing right now. Woo. Thanks for helping me. I don't want to go down this <laughs> last little jump won't be hard. Alright, if she breaks down again, now you guys are up.
was just a little steep drop off right here. Which people were walking it down. That I guess the rocks make you nervous, but you just pull in the clutch, let it roll down, and the bike handled just fine. And girl, she's still having some bike trouble there. Can't get the bike start. So uh, this other guy, he's gonna take over and help her out, which I'm glad he did because I was very exhausted. I'm sure. I mean, everyone is, but maybe it's nice to have someone else step up and and help start, out. Huh? Help her out, so good kudos to him. And yeah, good luck to her and the rest of her race. Hope she can finish. And I need to get going here. I need some airflow because it is hot. That whole section, such a slow pace, and, and you just start cooking. There's a tutu girl again. <laughs> I've seen her all the way since the start of Loop One. It's uh, full throttle till the top, right? I tried every single pull, like eight times at least. <laughs> I think you got this. Just carry your momentum up there. Where are they there? I guess not I'll race it. I don't even know what I said in that last part. I've rerun the tape a couple times and still can't understand what I was telling her. Alright, here we go. This chunky hill climb real loose, good size boulders. Just kicking your tires out left and right. Just gotta keep that momentum up and keep your uh, tires rolling. It was loose, but I was able to get it feathering the clutch quite a bit. Trying to take my time and pick a good line here, not make a mistake on these rocks. No one bad spill, and you land right on a rock, your bike lands on a rock, and something breaks. You end your race, especially up here, it'd be hard to get out of it. top of this mountain coming down this is like the biggest downhill of the race 
as far as you know, just steady downhill going through this, these rocks. Yeah, and there's a guy up here, and he looks like he's in bad shape, overheated. So I pull over and give him a bottle of my Gatorade. And I mean, he looked bad. You'll see him coming up. Coming up here, and there's a bike. I just see the guy, he's sitting there, and he's got his hands pulled in his head, and like he's not moving very much. And I'm talking to him, and I can barely hear him. He is the right there, and like he's you all right? not doing good. It's overheated. You got water? I got a Gatorade. Do you want it? Yeah, all right, let me give you Gatorade. Alright now, these hills, it's just been microwaving late. You don't look like you're doing good, so. Well, I'm back on, going down this pretty big downhill. I hope that guy uh, made it back all right. I told him, you know, you got to call a knockoff point if you're just gassed, exhausted, and he had no water. And there's still a lot, long ways to go for this loop. So I hope he made the right choice. Probably just pulled off because there were still some hard sections coming up, and still several miles of riding to go. So hopefully, he made it. It. It reminded me of the time I overheated. I got, I call it the, the Cow Creek Trail. I was up in uh, doing the Paiutes and I was going on a trail that was abandoned. You know, the, the trail was there, but there's trees and bushes overgrown on it. You know, it was not maintained anymore. And you can still make out the trail, except every obstacle was in the way. Logs, bushes, manzanita, it was, it was very difficult to get through. And up the hills, a lot of bike pushing. And I carry a lot of water on me, the three liter pack, and usually I carry two extra water bottles. But I ended up going through all of that. And as we're still going uphill, I, I keep seeing it, it loops around, it's gonna connect. But the train just gets worse and steeper, and the rocks looser, and, and uh, I'm just struggling and struggling to get to a point where I, I, uh, I'm out of water. I'm like, dang, I'm out of water and I'm still struggling. And I still got maybe another two miles to go up this hill and it's gonna, I imagine it's gonna get easier. But it doesn't, <laughs> it gets to a point where I, I have to stop and rest. And then I have to stop and rest like every 50 feet. I'm like just able to go 50 feet up and then I gotta lay the bike down, take my helmet off and just rest because it's really hot, no airflow where I was and uh, got to a point when I was like all right this is like becoming dangerous you need to turn around because I started to feel a little dizzy and I know dizziness is a sign of either heat exhaustion or something like that and I you know I'm a pretty hardcore guy I can I, I can put my body to the extreme limits but I said all right knock it off go back and just get out of here your rides over the ride was supposed to be a three-hour ride and it ended up taking me nine hours to finish to get back to my truck so <laughs> was, I was not prepared to be out for nine hours but as I'm going back there was I crossed a creek with a bunch of cows in it and the creek was about two feet wide and had water flowing and I was so thirsty and I said well it's worth it if I get uh, if I have the shits for the next week it's gonna be worth it to drink some water right now so <laughs> I just laid in that stream put my head in the water and just start drinking it and it, it saved my life I think hey look at that mine crazy what you find mines out here and like well 
what were they after? What were they digging? Or why did they pick this point in the mine or in the mountain? Like what what looks different about this rocks than the other rocks over there that made them choose to dig a hole right there? Because I mean, you know they're just digging with a shovel and the pick. There's some dynamite. And it, the amount of work they had to put in to just dig that little hole is immense. is making work another chunky hard rock section it should come up here and I should have took my time coming through here it came in a little too hot and I'm gonna smash my right brake my rear brake pedal on this rock right here and this rock right here BAM <laughs> oh that dented the hell out of that That's a teachable moment. These hard sections that are really not not that hard. I mean, if I slowed down, I could have maneuvered a little bit. But you know, next time I need to be a little bit more smarter about this. Yeah, because this is a slow technical section, and I could have easily maneuvered around that and then saved my brake my brake lever, not bending it all to hell. The so next time I'll I'm play a little bit smarter here in this rock section. Two guys up here, they're just taking a breather. And there's a little rocky steep downhill section here, which, which isn't too hard, but um, you know, if you're <sighs> exhausted, you just take your time. <laughs> he's he's blocking the trail and he's all, You want to go around? I was all, Yeah. And I'm like, Don't well, move, Get out of the way then. Okay. <laughs> can move up it's a not the bit easiest or? to get just pass you right here. And he, he moves I'll his bike go to the right here. just a couple inches out of the way. I'm like, I don't I don't even know if that helped. But she's going backwards. I was, I was like, just just go forward a little bit. But anyways, I was able to get it by him. There he goes. He just pulled his bike over. I, got such I guess I asked a for. lot of him to move <laughs> his bike over. Uh, they never make them loud enough. Tell you what. downhill rocky sections you know you just stay in control they got to keep that front tire rolling you don't want it to lock up and then wash out on you but it wasn't a, you know the camera doesn't show you how steep it is but that wasn't too bad that was actually pretty easy and uh, look who's ahead of me it's the tutu girl again I don't know where she came from because last time I saw her I went up I was trying to tell her to go up the hill but I went up I went up first and then I never saw her again and then magically Boom, there she is in front of me. <laughs> I was like, did she get around me? Was I looking left or right? I was like, I was amazed. I was like, wow, she made it up the hill. But later on, I, meet, I talked to her and she said she went around a different way, didn't go up the hill. But it just made me laugh. I was like, what? You know, you're hot, you're exhausted. I was like, did I miss her? I, I must have, she must have just passed me and I didn't see it. Back to the cow trail. I didn't finish it. <laughs> it gets better. So I'm just trailblazing across the, this creek section here in the mountains. There's no trail no more. And I'm following the creek down through the brush, going over trees. And there's some, some cows and the cattle are on there. And there's some cattle trails. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to follow the cattle trails. And I'm looking on my map where I'm going. I see there's a jeep road a couple miles up, so I'm just going to follow this cattle trail. 
Anyways, I get around a turn, and there's a bull, horns and all, just staring right in front of me, right at me. It's probably like 20 feet away. He just stared, stopped. He's got that puffed up chest. He's just looking right at me. And I was like, ah, oh, crap, you know? So I gotta go that way. So I'm, I'm looking at him, and I just start creeping towards him a little bit. And he snorts his head and thrashes it left and right, and then he does a U-turn, and he just starts taking off, charging down the trail, like, Sticks are flying, brushes are flying everywhere. He's just blasting through the brush. And uh, I was like, sweet, I got a blocker. So I just go after him. He's just destroying things. And I'm going after him. And uh, it just it was so hilarious. He's just blazing a trail through it. Anyways, I finally make it to the Jeep Road. I, I get on the Jeep Road. Going through, a, it's like a hillbilly, the hills have eyes kind of area. There's some really sketchy looking mobile homes and trailers out there. And there was a couple of people I saw out there, but I was just like, oh, just, just go through, don't stop, just keep on going, George. And I get through about halfway this, you know, I'm not out of the, the mountains yet, and my clutch starts going out, so my, my clutch ends up burning up, and I can barely make it. There's a couple of hills. Just a you know Jeep, slight grades, and my bike can barely make it up. And, and I'm like, oh man, how am I gonna get back to my truck? I'm still like 10 miles away. So I said, I'm just gonna go through town and hop on the freeway. And you know, I, I don't have a street legal bike, but it's got a front a headlight and tail light. So if, if for, you know, just a first glance, it probably will pass as a street legal bike. And so that's what I do. I, I drive through uh, Isabella, get on the freeway, drive all the way around the lake, Lake Isabella. <laughs> and I'm like, I just had no police, no cops. And um, it, I was able to get all the way back to my truck. So that was quite an adventure. Yeah, like I said, I was planning to do a three hour ride and I ended up taking me nine hours to get back to my truck. I was happy to be done. Every time I stop, I, I feel more rested, but it feels like I, I lose a step. That, that silty dirt that's just so powdery soft. Makes it real squirrely in the back end. God, these washes are just killing me. Now you're getting to a point where you can't even stand it anymore. You're just sitting, just getting crushed by going up and down these washes. I forgot about that one. That almost took me out. I can't fall at this point. If I, if I lay the bike down or fall, I'm going to just turn into dust.
Did you make it up that hill back back ways? Which one? I don't know. You pulled up next to me. You said you didn't think you could make it. No, I went around. That's the yeah, dude. I couldn't. Oh, I was like, dang, she did it. Where? This way. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there it is. I see the. I think we're still about six, seven miles out from the finish line here. And I'm starting to get that uh, lack of motivation to just get home. You know, I'm just I'm done. Uh, the intensity's gone. The willpower. <laughs> it's just uh, it's a struggle to do to keep riding at this point. the place. Can't stay on the track. I'm just so exhausted. Hill climbs though, they aren't not letting up still that you have all these chunky hill hill climbs. And you don't want to fall there, man. If I were like I said, if I were to fall halfway up there, having to deadlift the bike and turn it around, do another shot, I I'd be done. I'm finished. I'm just going along here and then I start seeing the tracks don't look as fresh and you see a couple of tracks like turning left or right and I'm like oh man I'm lost because I can see that other people got lost ahead of me and then I gotta stop look around and I just have a feeling like I'm assuming it must be right here so I just start heading right and I'm gonna hit the main uh, the main line again so it's not easy to get lost you're just you're so tired at this point, you just heads down and it's you miss little pink ribbons. And there's no one out here. Remember in loop one, there's a ton of people, it's, it's easy to see. Now you're at the end of loop two, and you're just out by yourself. And it's so easy to get lost. It's the first person I've seen in, I think, two miles. So it gave me hope. Checkpoint till the finish line. I was so excited. I was like, all right, I know the end is getting near.
it's survival time now. Now I just gotta survive the next four miles until the finish line. It's the water. right here. This is a little chunky section which I lined up and I was able to just zap it and get right through it. Well, until right there my, my swing arm actually was caught in the rock. So I was too tired. I was like, oh, do I got a deadlift and a pull back in over or just keep rocking because I kept catching on the swing arm which got through good on the other side there's two guys down there one I guess I think he's out of gas or he's having trouble with the gas tank he was working on the bike and later on I'll run into someone who says hey is there anyone out of gas up there and <laughs> I remember these guys I said yeah he's like three miles back there and he's like all right he takes off No shade, the guy's right? crouching Just taking a breather. behind his bike trying to get some shade. How are you doing? I'm tired and hot as shit. Yeah. I got the tired part with you. <laughs> totally, definitely fucking tired. <sighs> Sorry, what were you trying to stay out of the sun? Oh. Yeah, no worries. Alright, good luck fellas. Let's go, we're getting close to the end now. Another three miles.
going. I'm surprised uh, the tires weren't fresh or anything, but I was able to get really good traction up this, these rocky sections. And I know they're soft, but uh, I guess maybe the momentum and uh, I was able to feather the clutch enough and just control the, the wheel spin of the back tire and just kept going up. I lived through is just relentless. They really threw in a lot of rocky hill climbs. I've done a couple other hare and hounds, and this hare and hound, this loop to by far uh, ten times harder than any, any of the other uh, hare and hounds I've done. I missed that arrow. That arrow, there's a right turn arrow. I see it on the video now, but I missed it. So I'm going here and I'm, I'm just, uh, the tire marks, yeah, I see people making U-turns right here. I'm looking at the ground and I see the, uh, you know, the track going that way. People turning right. So then I have to turn around too. So I make a U-turn, come back, and um, ended up finding the, the uh, get back on track. pink ribbon on that little bush. So this of course must be down the going down here. Yep, there's some fresh tire marks on the ground. Back on track. Let's go. off again, yep. <laughs> oh, it's so easy to get lost in this second loop, which this part of the course, it, it connected back, so I'm running on the same route as loop one now, and it looks familiar to me. I'm like, all right, I've already, I rode here already on loop one, and then I started thinking, well, did I, I, I lost loop two. Oh man, I said, I'm, I'm off. I'm totally off. I'm on the wrong loop. Because I did this on loop one already. But I think they just connected because this goes back to the finish line now. So they just connected the two loops here. I'm hoping. I mean, I didn't see anyone to say anything different. So I'm like, it, if they had a different uh, track for loop two at this point, yeah, I'm not gonna find it because I'm I'm not gonna leave this. First time I passed, he was fixing something on his bike. How far back was it? Probably uh, three miles. Three? Yeah. Is this the right way? Yeah, oh yeah. So you start to doubt we don't see anyone for a long time. You're yeah. like, what? Yeah, no, you, you, you only got to 
about a mile to go. All right. Two miles. Uh, all right, cool. track just another mile to go and they can finally take a nap that's what I need Got my last little burst of energy, so I'm trying to come in hot. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I haven't seen no one in you know, the whole last five miles of the race. I haven't seen a single rider. Other than the guys that were broke down. Overall, fantastic race. I really enjoyed this one. I like the harder section. I'm glad they stepped up the two. Because it makes it different. It makes loop one one style of racing and makes loop two another style of race which I really enjoy the, the riding but I was glad to be done and you drive through the pits like everyone's gone by now most of the people do just the first loop but awesome race well done uh, Jackrabbits is a great race brutal oh yeah I had to give someone my uh, backup Gatorade he was hurting bad. I hope he makes it back. Who? That's some old guy. He was on the, one of the downhills. He was just like laid out. Really? I was all, you got water? He's all, nope. I was all, what number was he? My bad. Oh, I need to do idea. a better job of getting the engine numbers if you see people struggling. You. Best. Anyways, right. hope you enjoyed loop two. Uh, I got a race in two weeks stuff. for yeah, the, yeah. the second round of the series. Till then, get out and ride and get some. Yeah.